foundation of the Torah, and thus Christianity, rested on the story that God brought us out of bondage in Egypt. And at the end, as at the beginning, what remained at the center of all God's law was that we were once slaves in Egypt. All the Jewish festivals and feast days were about God setting us free from Egypt, and the rest of the Bible was not about God, but about God's problem with people. The giving of the law of the Torah to Moses on Mount Sinai gifted us with the pattern that God would follow in order to be in relationship with us. And all the festivals ordained in the law were so that God could reveal himself to his human children through these feasts. The laws that God gave to Moses were a simple program written down in the 16th chapter of Deuteronomy. And these were the three festivals. Verse 1 to 8 was Passover, verse 9 to 12 was Weeks, and verse 13 to 15 was Booths. Because the end must be as the beginning, these rel religious festivals were not just ceremonies of remembrance, but served as a rehearsal for the future. The Jewish holidays were agricultural instructions for survival, such as the festival of first fruits during the Feast of Weeks when they were supposed to pick the best of what they had grown so they could save the prime seeds for the following year. The rules for ritual slaughter and burning of sacrifices was to encourage them to eat cooked meat in case they missed the lesson that the first offender in the Torah had been the one who grew vegetables. Ritual slaughter laws guaranteed that a trained butcher would sacrifice animals without causing unnecessary suffering, because the priest had a sharp knife and knew exactly where to cut, and the blood would be discarded at the temple, rather than having everyone slaughtering animals on their own front doorsteps. The temple had been built on top of the Gihon Spring, where water was forced from an underground aquifer up into a cave seven feet by nineteen feet and the ancients chipped out a pool of Siloam to store the fresh water, and they dug a series of water channels and sewer races to send the sacrificial blood, along with human waste, down to the agricultural fields in the Kidron Valley. The, the good Jews were supposed to smear blood on their doorposts at Passover as a precursor sign for the work that would be done by Jesus, and those marked houses proclaimed themselves to be God's children and were saved from the angel of death. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths. In all solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make conciliation for the house of Israel. Ezekiel 45.17 King James Bible The sacrifices were not supposed to be completely burnt up, but were to be eaten and enjoyed. And what was a sacrifice but something that, when killed and eaten, made life itself possible? The bread was that his body, the bread that was his body, was given to us that we might have life among the Spirit. Yet before we get ahead of the story, let's read a description of just what the sacrifice is from the Holman Christian Standard Bible. These are the appointed times that you are to proclaim as sacred assemblies for presenting fire offerings to the Lord, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each on its designated day. Leviticus 23.37 if you prepare a young bull as a burnt offering or as a sacrifice to fulfill a vow or as a fellowship offering to the Lord, a grain offering of six quarts of fine flour mixed with two quarts of oil must be presented with the bull. Also present two quarts of wine as a drink offering. Numbers 15, 8 through 10. The Nazarite is to shave his consecrated head at the entrance to the tent of meeting, take the hair from his head and put it on the fire under the fellowship sacrifice. The priest is to take the boiled shoulder from the ram, one unleavened cake from the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and put them into the hands of the Nazarite after he has shaved his consecrated head. The priest is to wave them as a presentation offering before the Lord. 
It is a holy portion for the priest, in addition to the breast of the presentation offering and the thigh of the contribution. After that, the Nazarite may drink wine. Numbers 6.18-20 to 20. This passage was immediately followed by the priestly blessing, May the Lord bless and keep you, may he make his face to shine upon you. And another recipe for communion with the Lord was presented in Exodus 29.38-42. This is what you are to offer regularly on the altar every day. Two-year-old lambs. In the morning offer one lamb, and at twilight offer the other lamb. With the first lamb, offer two quarts of fine flour mixed with one quart of oil from crushed olives, and a drink offering of one quart of wine. You are to offer a second lamb at twilight. Offer a grain offering and a drink offering with it, like the one in the morning, as a pleasing aroma, a fire offering to the Lord. This will be a regular burnt offering throughout your generations at the entrance of the tent of meeting before the Lord, where I will meet you to speak with you. An example of Jewish poetry from Genesis forty nine ten through 11 spoke to the heart and soul of God's children, and from the King James Version this time. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be, binding his foal unto the vine, his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes shall be red with wine, and his teeth white with milk. Jesus was Jewish, and so were all the apostles so they had strictly practiced all the festivals. And when Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles, he went in disguise so he could be anonymous. And this festival had included the Feast of the Dedication, where people registered their names, as as in 1 Maccabees 4, 36-7. Then Judas and his brothers said, Now that our enemies have been crushed, let us go up to purify the sanctuary and rededicate it. So the whole army assembled and went up to Mount Zion. Names gave power and standing, so having a name and registering had been a very big deal. And having standing came from the same root word as ness or banner. And that word was used for the first time in Exodus 17.15, where the Jewish altar upon which they would make sacrifices had been given a name. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. Christian Standard Bible. The word ness for banner, for banner. The word ness, N-E-C, for banner, was Strong's 5251, and appeared again in Isaiah 11, 10 through 12. On that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for his people. The nations will look to him for guidance, and his resting place will be glorious. On that day, the Lord will extend his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people who survive. He will lift up a banner for the nations and gather the dispersed of Israel. He will collect the scattered of Judah from the four four corners of the earth. Christian Standard Bible. This banner, or ensign, N-E-C, is the Lion of the Tribe of Judah from Revelation 5.5, who has triumphed and is able to open the scroll with the seven seals. And the word N-E-C, Ness, in Hebrew, was not only the banner as in a flag, but was also a standard or a pole, such as the tree upon which he was nailed. Dewey Reams translated Isaiah 18.3 as, All ye inhabitants of the world who dwell on the earth, when the sign any sea ness shall be lifted up on the mountains, you shall see and you shall hear the sound of the trumpet. Most importantly, the ness any sea is the pole upon which Moses was instructed to place a metal snake or an image of the fiery serpent that whoever was bitten by the snake could look upon it and be healed or recover or be saved from death. Numbers 21, 8 through 9. The word ne- ness, N-E-C, also appeared in the first four verses of Psalm 60. 
God, you have rejected us. You have broken us down. You have been angry. Restore us again. You have made the land tremble. You have torn it. Mend its fractures, for it quakes. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine that makes us stagger. You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Selah. New Heart English Bible. The banner was a lofty signal flag that was not carried about but was stationary, usually established on top of a mountain or other place where it could be seen from a long way away. And as soon as the banner NEC Ness was seen, the war trumpets were blown. The banners and ensigns of the Roman army had idolatrous images on them, and hence the Roman flags were called the abomination of desolation. The principal Roman standard was an eagle, so the Jewish nation was described as a dead body where the eagles gathered together to devour them, from Matthew twenty four twenty eight and Luke seventeen thirty seven, and the symbol of the eagle on the uniforms of the Third Reich reminded all good Jews of this prophecy, and many of them sang messianic songs as they rolled over the train tracks towards Auschwitz, knowing the prophecies with the same eagles in Job 39.30 and Ezekiel 39.17 and Habakkuk 1.7 were eagles sent by God to destroy them, but in the danger would lie their rescue. Now on the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from within him will flow rivers of living water. John 7:37 to 8, World English Bible. There is a river the streams of which shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Psalm 46.5 Webster's Bible Translation After the man of sin had been ruling over the chosen people, then would come the great and glorious day of the Lord, of which the faithful Jews in the cattle cars were singing. Upon the wicked he will rain snares. Fire and brimstone and burning wind will be the portion of their cup. Psalms 11.6, New American Standard Bible. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is full of mixture, and he poureth out the same. But the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth, shall wring them out and drink them. Psalms 75.8, King James Bible. The Catholic Bible said the cup, quote, full of mixture, meant that drugs were put into the wine to make it more intoxicating, and going forward along this thought path, we come again to the cup of God's wrath, being the punishment he has for sinners. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hast drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling, and wrung them out. Isaiah fifty one seventeen, King James Bible. A footnote sends us to Jeremiah twenty five fifteen through eighteen and twenty seven to twenty eight something written in six o five b c for thus saith the Lord God of Israel unto me, Take the wine cup of this fury at my hand, and cause all the nations to whom I send thee to drink it, and they shall drink and be moved and be mad because of the sword that I will send among them. Then I took the cup at the Lord's hand and made all the nations to drink unto whom the Lord had sent me, to wit, Jerusalem, and the cities of Judah, and the kings thereof, and the princes thereof, to make them a desolation, and astonishment, and hissing, and a curse, as it is to this day. As it is this day. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, drink ye, and be drunken, and spew, and fall, and rise no more, because of the sword which I will send among you. And it shall be, if they refuse to take the cup at they, thine hand to drink, then shalt thou say to them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, ye shall certainly drink. The Catholic version of Jeremiah 25, 9 was, I will doom them, making them an object of horror, of ridicule, of everlasting reproach. If even those who did not deserve to be punished had to drink from the cup of punishment, do you think that you will go unpunished? No, you must drink from the cup. Jeremiah 49.12, Good News Translation. The Lord's anointed... Okay. The Lord's anointed, our very breath, 
our very life breath. The Lord's anointed, our very life breath was caught in their traps. We thought that under his shadow we could live among the nations. Rejoice and be glad, daughter Edom, you who live in that land of ooze, but to you also the cup will be passed, you will be drunk and stripped naked. Lamentations 4, 20 and 21, New, New International Version. Jesus picked up the cup motif in Matthew twenty twenty two. Yeshua answered and said, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am prepared to drink or be baptized in the baptism to which I am to be baptized? They were saying to him, We are able. Aramaic Bible in plain English. The footnote then refers us to Revelation 14.10. And the book of Revelation says to come out of Babylon. And Babylon was what God had used to bring his people to repentance. After 70 years of exile in Babylon, the faithful people had been allowed to return to the holy city of Jerusalem after having learned that their covenant with God had a timetable and that he would keep his promises. Babylon was a gold cup in the hand of the Lord, making the whole earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations have gone mad. Jeremiah 51, 7, Berean Study Bible. Then a second angel followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, who has made all the nations drink the wine of the passion of her immorality. Revelation 14, 8, Berean Study Bible. Mystery Babylon was a city and a city was a group of people or a political system to which a group or, quote, city of people belonged. And in Revelation 17:15, Mystery Babylon sat on many waters or on many peoples and was not just a city, but was a great city or an enormous political system. Babylon did not recognize God's authority, and the people there wanted to, quote, make a name for themselves apart from God's name and Babylon was a city with a curse like the curse that had been given to Cain. When Cain murdered his brother Abel, God cursed Cain with having to go live in cities where the land would not produce if he wanted to farm. So Cain could not build a homestead so he could raise a family if he had to live with within the confines of the city. A mark as in the mark of Cain, was something that allowed us to recognize evil so we would be able to know the truth about the judgment that had been, been decreed upon that person by God. With the mark, Cain had become a renegade, and the word mark was similar to the meaning of Ness, N-E-C, except that it was a mark personal to just Cain as in a letter or writing placed on his forehead, and it was not the rallying flag of a ness meant for an entire peoples. With the mark, Cain was not allowed to be killed, but was shown to be the bad example of a godless murderer, and so Cain had become the precursor to the Antichrist that would also wear a mark on the forehead. The whore of Babylon would have a mark on her forehead that was a name, not a flag, while the saints who were marked on their foreheads were given numbers so they could be counted. The number given the saints was a seal, S-E-A-L, from Strong's Word 4972, that implied a sacred promise, not a curse, such as was given to the Antichrist. The eleventh chapter of the book of Daniel said the Antichrist would abolish the daily sacrifice, the drink offering, and the meat offering. And in so doing, the Antichrist would set up, quote, the abomination of desolation, close quote. In Joel 1, 9-13, the great desolation was described as the failure of the grain and the wine and all the fruit trees that had died, so there was no drink offering to bring to the Lord. Ezekiel's cup of desolation of 2333 was the second cup in the Passover ritual. And while Judas would leave the room after the first cup, or the cup of sanctification, wine was called the cup of consolation in Jeremiah 16.7, and that would be the cup that Antichrist would attempt to abolish. As well as outlawing alcohol, the Antichrist would also hate women, 
because despising women was part of the punishment that God gave to the serpent in the garden. And the serpent was a precursor to the end-time Antichrist, since the end would be as at the beginning. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because of what you've done, you will be the only animal to suffer this curse. For as long as you live, you will crawl on your stomach and eat dirt. You and this woman will hate each other, and your descendants and hers will always be enemies. One of hers will strike you on the head, and you will strike him on the heel. Genesis 3.14 and 15 Contemporary English Version God's punishment given to the woman was lighter than the sentence passed upon Adam because Eve had been deceived while Adam had intentionally and willfully transgressed. And because the end would be as at the beginning, so the Antichrist would exhibit the same evil incarnate in the snake in the garden and would, quote, not honor the desire of women, close quote. Not that the snake would not desire women, but that he would not honor what women desire. He will have no respect for the gods of his ancestors or for the god loved by women or for any other god, for he will boast that he is greater than them all. Daniel 11.37, New Living Translation. The call of Muhammad's followers was not God is great, but Allah is greater or greater than the God who had given the law to, Mount, to Moses on Mount Sinai. Neither shall he care for the God of his fathers, nor the love of women, nor care for any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his place shall he honor the God of fortresses, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Daniel 11.37 and 8, Jubilee Bible 2000. While the Antichrist was drinking the blood of the martyrs of Christianity, the whore of Babylon, who was also called the great harlot, was riding the beast of the Antichrist, and the harlot was a city or a group of people, and the harlot mimicked the bride of Christ that was a city true to God. Antichrist was not necessarily a person, but a mimicking of the body of Christ, and the Antichrist did not have power on its own, so it was not like the real Christ who was powerful, but power had to be given to the Antichrist. The word he in Hebrew can also mean they, so the Antichrist could be a group or a body of believers. And the apostles understood that Antichrist was a spirit that included anyone who denied that Jesus is the Christ and deny the Father and the Son. And according to the 22nd verse of the second chapter of First John, And the dragon was angry with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her children, keeping the commandments of God and holding the testimony of Jesus. And he stood upon the sand of the sea. Revelation twelve seventeen, Berean Study Bible. The sands of the sea was described by Hosea as the Jewish multitudes, and Arabia was called the Sea of Sands, and Saudi Arabia was also called the Desert of the Sea. The original name from the Canaanite Islamic cult that had been practicing satanic deity worship was Baala, and that was where the word Beelzebub had come from, or Baal as Zubub, with Baal as the root word. And Mohammed, Mohammed shortened Baala to Allah. Sinai had been named after Sin, spelled S-I-N, that was the name of the Yemeni moon god. And Muslims claimed they did not worship a meteorite that was given to them by one of the Greek gods living on Mount Olympus, another moon god named Artemis. And the meteorite had fallen from heaven into the Garden of Eden. Jesus answered them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Luke 10.18, Berean Study Bible. Berean Literal Bible. King of Babylon, bright morning star, you have fallen from heaven. In, in the past you conquered nations, but now you have been thrown to the ground. You were determined to climb up to heaven and to place your throne above the highest stars. You thought you would sit like a king on that mountain in the north where the gods assemble. Isaiah fourteen twelve through 13 Good News Translation. Mohammed was purported to have ascended into heaven on a creature with a human face that was bigger than a donkey, and its name was Barak. 
B-A-R-A-Q. And the creature's name also meant lightning. And the devil told Mohammed to ignore the Ten Commandments, so he went ahead and broke every single one. Daniel 8.25 said that, quote, by peace he shall destroy many, close quote, Jubilee Bible 2000. And the word for peace in the Hebrew was S-L-M, Salam, with no consonants. So it would be by S-L-M or by Islam that he will destroy many. An image is a representation or a copy of an original, and the false prophet will have the power to give breath to an image of the Antichrist, quote, so it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed, Revelation 13.15. So if the false prophet was Mohammed, he gave Islam the ability to speak by writing the Quran, which was a false Torah or a counterfeit copy of the original law. Mohammed was born 500 years after the temple was destroyed, but the exact date of his birth went unrecorded, and it had been on the fifth day that God created the sea monsters and the dragons that were Strong's 8577. On the great and glorious day of the Lord, these evil sea creatures will be vanquished. On that day, the Lord will use his fierce and powerful sword to punish Leviathan, that slippery snake, Leviathan, that twisting snake. He will kill that monster which lives in the sea, Isaiah 27, 1, God's Word Translation. The monster living in the sea in the second line of this stanza was Strong's 8577, the same word for the dragons and the sea serpents created on the fifth day, while Leviathan was a formal name and was Strong's word 3882, and the name Leviathan only appeared five times in the entire Bible. In Psalms 104.26 it said that God had created Leviathan to frolic and sport in the sea. And Leviathan also referred to Babylon and meant a constellation that could sweep large swaths of star out of the sky, stars out of the sky. The myth from which the name arose described a, quote, fugitive serpent that had seven heads and he represented the forces of chaos or anarchy. And the Jewish tradition became that Leviathan would be cut up into pieces for food to enjoy when the Messiah arrives, while the skin of Leviathan would be made useful as tent cloth. Muhammad lived for 62 years, the same period of time that the prophet Daniel warned about in chapter 9, 26-7. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and on, unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. King James Version If Jesus fulfilled the first three of the appointed f times or feasts, by becoming the Passover lamb, rising on unleavened bread, and sending the Spirit as tongues of fire and flame on Shavuot. Then halfway through the week of seven festivals would be right in the middle of the Feast of Weeks, where the gospel was being carried throughout the world. And in the middle of this week, the world saw the rise of Islam that cut off the sacrifice and oblation and made Christianity desolate wherever Islamism was spread. In the last days, the Antichrist would have all of the Holy Land under its power, and the biblical greater Israel was defined by the borders of two rivers, the Nile and the Euphrates, and the Catholic translation of Daniel's prophecy read, And after sixty-two weeks Christ shall be slain, and the people that shall deny him shall not be his, and a people with their leader that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be waste, and after the end of the war the appointed desolation.
not to belabor the point. Young's literal translation said, And after the sixty and two weeks, cut off is Messiah, and the city and the holy place are not his. The leader who hath come doth destroy the people, and its end is with a flood, and till the end is war, determined are desolations. So if the template of salvation is the seven Jewish feasts mandated to Moses on Mount Sinai, and Jesus fulfilled the first three and a half feasts, then when Mohammed died at the age of 62, the never-ending warfare between the Sunni and the Shiite had brought the curse of Islam upon the whole world. The New Living Translation called it, quote, 62 sets of seven, close quote, and read, and a ruler will arise whose armies will destroy the city and the temple. The end will come with a flood, and war and its miseries are decreed from that time to the very end. The ruler will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven, but after half this time he will put an end to the sacrifices and offerings, and as a climax to all his terrible deeds he will set up a sacrilegious object that causes desecration until the fate decreed for this defiler is finally poured out on him. The words given Daniel were, quote, seventy sevens, and the seventieth year for the faithful Jews was called a jubilee year, when everyone went home and all debts were erased, and the template of the seven meant that the year of our Lord would be the final jubilee, or the great and terrible day of the Lord, and that would be the ultimate completion of the seven feasts. The New English Translation put the prophecy of Daniel nine twenty four through seven into the form of Jewish poetry. Seventy weeks have been determined concerning your people and your holy city to put an end to rebellion, to bring sin to completion, to atone for iniquity, to bring in perpetual righteousness, to seal up the prophetic vision, and to anoint a most holy place. So know and understand, from the issuing of the command to restore and rebuild, Jerusalem until an anointed one, a prince, arrives, there will be a period of seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It will be again be built with plaza and moat, but in dis distressful times. Now after the sixty-two weeks, an anointed an anointed one will be cut off and have nothing. As for the city and the sanctuary, the people of the coming prince will destroy them. But his end will come speedily like a flood. Until the end of the war that has been decreed, there will be destruction. He will confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of that week he will bring sacrifices and offerings to a halt. On the wing of abominations will come one who destroys, until the decreed end is poured out on the one who destroys. The idea that there needed to be a third temple presupposed that Jesus didn't mean what he said about his body being the temple, and after Pentecost, after Pentecost, each spirit-filled Christian's body had also become a temple. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. John 2.19.21, King James Version. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. 1 Corinthians 6.19 New Living Translation What does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Can God's temple contain false gods? Clearly, we are the temple of the living God. 2 Corinthians 6.16 God's Word Translation the pattern for the temple had begun with a box that housed the Spirit of the Lord, and the box required the sacrifices of burnt offerings and drink offerings to keep it alive. And when the Jewish temple was destroyed in 70 AD, even the foundation stones had been torn up, so not one stone remained upon another. By the time the Moslems arrived, there was no longer any memory of where the temple had stood, and the city of David with its Gihon spring was south of the still-standing foundation of what came to be called the Temple Mount. 
from Wikipedia's entry on Dome of the Rock. It was only when Umar marched in Jerusalem with an army that he asked Kaab, a Jew, where do you advise me to build a place of worship? Kaab indicated the Temple Rock, now a gigantic heap of ruins from the Temple of Jupiter. The Jews, Kaab explained, had briefly won back their old capital a quarter of a century before, parenthesis, when Persians overran Syria and Palestine, close parenthesis, but they had not had time to clear the site of the temple, for the Rums, Byzantines, had recaptured the city. It was then that Umar ordered the rubbish on the Sacra rock to be removed by the Nabataeans, and after three showers of heavy rain had cleansed the rock, he instituted prayers there. To this day the place is known as Kubat es Sacra, the Dome of the Rock. When Mohammed had died five years earlier, in 632, Abu Bakr had taken over for two years until Umar became the caliph. caliph. And the Iranians assassinated Umar ten years later, in 644, and the Iranians had been the ones who invented crucifixion, although the Urantia book said it was the Phoenicians. A man named Uthman took over from Umar as caliph, caliph, and conquered Iran for Islam. And the Iranians and their Shah started Sharia law. Umar had compiled the Quran and started the worship of the Antichrist on the Temple Mount in 637, right where the gold dome building would be constructed there on the battlements of the old Roman Fort Antonia. And Umar had married a total of nine women, and he had fourteen children, ten sons, and four daughters. The seventy-two virgins in the Quran's view of heaven meant that those virgins would have brothers and cousins required to defend their her honor by killing the Moslems awarded to these virgins, so Moslems will still be busy killing each other in heaven. And some scholars said that the word for 72 virgins was actually 72 raisins. With the death of Mohammed, Moslems went to war with each other over who would be the new leader of Islam. And the difference was that the Sunnis elected their leaders while the Shiites chose theirs from genetic descent. And they had remained in this confusion until the Jews in Turkey straightened out the question for them. Uthman had not, Uthman had known Mohammed and had married two of his daughters. And Uthman had conquered the part of Afghanistan called the Khorasan because Mohammed had prophesied that the great Mahdi would come from the Khorasan, also known as Greater Iran. Christianity had spread out and away from Jerusalem after the temple was destroyed in 70 AD, and the followers of Jesus didn't need the temple anymore because they believed that his resurrected body was the new temple. The Jews remaining in Jerusalem after the destruction of the temple had become hostile towards Christians. So the gospel was safely carried away from Jerusalem, and thousands of converts were made using the Old Testament scriptures alone. When the Apostle John finally wrote the book of Revelation on the island of Patmos, he wrote it in the Greek language on a Greek island, and his word for 666 had been copied and recopied until the oldest surviving version was the Codex Vaticanus, written in the early 300s. The, quote, name of the beast or the number of its name, close quote, was written in Revelation 13.18. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666, English Standard Version. The number of the name of the Antichrist were the same letters that the Moslems would use in their Bismala, the first word at the beginning of every chapter in the Quran, and those Greek letters in Arabic meant in the name of Allah. And that had happened, because Moslems were told that if they read the New Testament, they would go to hell forever, so they had missed the fair warning about the number of the name of the Antichrist. 
Jews were teaching the same thing, that reading the New Testament would condemn their souls for all eternity. So John's number 666, as the Greek letters ki Ji stigma had become the Muslim name for Allah by slipping in right under the radar. While the Muslims were busy worshipping worshiping their god of fortresses, the caliphate had begun to decline by 976, and the Muslims blamed the Jews for their failure to thrive and slaughtered them in Grenada in 1066, the same year the Normans were invading England. The Muslim mob in Spain killed over 4,000 Jews in one day, and as a result of the massacre in Grenada, Spanish Jews redoubled their efforts to comply with the Islamic Sharia law. The Jews in Spain became so thick with the Muslims that Ferdinand and Isabella kicked them out in 1492, and the ejected Jews were welcomed into Turkey, where they assisted the, Mo the Ottomans to become the head of the caliphate for the next 400 years. Walid Shuibat said that Turkey was the wounded head of the beast that would come back to life in the last days as the eighth king in Revelation 17 because the beast with the head wound had been one of the previous seven kings. The rumor was that Jews had been instrumental in helping Muhammad write the Quran in the first place in order to get Muslims to wipe out the Christians. And Jews in Turkey allied with Germany during the Great War. And for joining the losing side, Turkey lost their caliphate at the armistice of 1918. The Kaiser had been complicit in getting the Turkish Muslims worked up against Christians in the Holy Land and the British had gotten in with the Shiite Muslims in Iran because the British were practiced in appealing to the snobbery of genetic superiority and the Shiites were thoroughly bought into the being descended from Mohammed thing. When Saddam Hussein and his Sunnis kicked the British out of Iraq in 1958, Saddam did away with the Palestinian monarchy that the British had enthroned in Iraq after the Great War. And after setting up a Sunni government in Iraq, Saddam went to war with the Iranian Shiites, who were still doing business with the British. The scary thing about the Shiite Muslims was that they thought that if they blew up the whole world, their great Mahdi would return. And their Mahdi was precisely described in the book of Revelation as the Christian's Antichrist. The Crusades had been undertaken to win the Holy, ba Holy Land back from the Muslims, who were called Saracens at the time, and Saracen came from the Semitic word that meant thieves. The First Crusade in 1095 was followed by successive waves that included Crusades at sea to eliminate the Barbary Coast pirates. The Barbary Coast stretched from Casablanca to El Alamein, and the Crusades would continue until the Protestant Revolution forced the Church to concentrate instead on the rebellions back home. The end of the Crusades was marked by Henry VIII starting his own Church of England, and that gave Protestantism the stamp of state sponsorship, and thereafter European countries were able to refuse the Pope's call to Crusade so they could turn their attention instead towards battling each other. The Christians lost Jerusalem in 1244, and when a seventh crusade failed, Jerusalem would be under the thumb of Islam until they were defeated by Lawrence of Arabia's tribes during the Great War. When Constantinople had fallen in 1453, it had been the only remaining Christian oasis in the region, and the Muslim invasion continued towards Hungary until they met Vladislav Dracula in Transylvania. The Muslim offensive brought opium with it, and getting addicted was like being bit by a vampire, and innocent people would be subsumed into the opium habit until they were knocking at death's door. People learned that vampires have no souls and cannot see themselves in mirrors, and vampires are not allowed to come into one's home unless invited. Dracula had gotten his name from the Crusader Order of the Dragon, whose shield was a dragon with a cross on its back and its tail wrapped around its neck, 
and the patch of the Order of the Dragon came from an ancient Egyptian symbol that had a dragon making a circle by eating its own tail. There was constant fighting with the Moslems, who were unable to keep track of who was supposed to inherit the throne since they had more than one wife and the multiple offspring, and multiple offspring, and the children would bicker over each, each succession until the Russians had to come down to help them make up their minds. The Europeans lacked, lacked the unity necessary to counter the spread of Islam. And in 1338, the Bohemian Hussites said that Germany did not even have to ask the Pope's opinion about who would rule in Germany, and they firmly excluded the Pope in the Golden Bull of 1356, which decreed that only four out of seven electors were needed to choose the Holy Roman Emperor. The Golden Bull also declared that the coronation would be held at Aachen, and when the Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund of Luxembourg tried to save Constantinople from the Moslems in 1396 by leading the crusade of Nicopolis. The Swiss guard faithfully stayed at the Vatican to guard the Pope. Protestantism continued to grow in Central Europe among the Hussites, which became an enormous problem when they fought with the Catholics trying to keep the Moslems from further invading Europe into Europe. When the Reconquista was finally accomplished in Spain, the Catholic Spanish joined with the Catholic Austrians in 1516 to become the most powerful empire in the world for over 100 years, and at that time Spain owned land on five continents. Martin Luther came along 25 years after the Reconquista to nail his papers to the church door in 1517, and that would distract the Germans from dealing with the Turks, who found out that Europeans would pay them to temporarily mind their own business, but every peace agreement would be dishonored, because that's what the Koran told the Moslems to do. For many centuries, Jews had not been allowed to own land in Europe, and while enlightened people engaged in trade, barter was a slow waste of time until a common cur currency was exchange was established. A common currency exchange was established. The British East India Company had brought banking to India, and the use of currency would conquer that subcontinent more easily than armies. Barbarians resort to war while trade requires the use of currency, and as better technology improved the chances of beating one's enemy, keeping up with advances in technology required more loans from banking institutions, while India failed to keep out the Aryans because all they had were elephants, bamboo longbows, and massive shirtless infantry armies. Hannibal had been successful by giving his elephants alcohol to go into battle, and when the Phoenicians sailed to Venice and became Venetians, they grew rich trading in opium, and Constantinople, founded by the Roman, Roman Emperor Constantine, thrived on the opium trade for 1,000 years. The city of Constantinople spoke mostly Greek, because that was the language of business and the Twelve Apostles had Septuagint Bibles that were written in Greek translated from the Hebrew, because many Jews could no longer read Hebrew, although they could speak it, and St. Paul had been a Greek-speaking Jew born in Turkey. We might have known what Jesus looked like, except that Leo the Itsarian, in the year 726 went on an anti-icon spree in Constantinople for three years, and all the precious artistic treasures were destroyed in the name of respect they thought should be shown to God. The standard artistic depiction of Jesus Christ became the images called Pantocrators, showing him with two different halves of his face, one side a nice gentle Jesus, and the other side a stern judgmental Christ. Every cathedral built throughout Europe showcased a Christ Pantroc Pantocrator, with the most significant gracing the ceiling of the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. Turk was originally a Chinese name, Tukin, 
a name gifted to them by the Mongols, and the Mongol word for Cossack meant an individual, someone out for himself instead of just being a member of a group. And when the Mongols went back to China, Islam quickly became an intolerant one-world faith with a one-world government and a one-world language. The description of the Antichrist was that it is was that it would mimic Jesus, such as coming to power on a donkey. And the Antichrist would declare itself to be God from Jerusalem and would make that claim from the temple in Jerusalem or what it thought to be the temple. The Muslim Umma, 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 or people comprising the body of Islam would imitate the Church of Jesus. And it wasn't simply these similarities that the Muslims would borrow but their entire golden age consisted of translating conquered cultures' writings into Arabic, subsuming all their discoveries and authorship, and using paper the Islamists had taken from the Chinese. The Muslims didn't even write their own history. And from Wikipedia, Mark Cohen, professor of Near Eastern Studies at Princeton University, in his Under Crescent and Cross, calls the idealized interfaith utopia a myth that was promulgated by Jewish historians such as Heinrich Gretz in the 19th century as a rebuke to Christian countries for their treatment of Jews. The Battle of Senta was fought on September 11, 1697 and resulted in a major defeat for the Muslim Ottomans at the hands of the Habsburg imperial forces, and the Ottomans had been beaten in Serbia while they were crossing a river that was 700 feet across, and the river at Senta was 100 miles south of Budapest. The Austrians lost a few hundred while the Mo Muslims suffered 30,000 casualties and were forced out of Europe and in 1774 Russia's Catherine the Great would free the Ukrainians from the Moslems who had infiltrated up into the motherland. Russians were part Scandinavian and part Mongolian and part First Nations Red Man, which meant they had all three primary colors working for them. And Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin would dis declare the following to the motherland. In Russia live Russians, any minority from anywhere, if it wants to live in Russia, to work and eat in Russia, should speak Russian, and should respect the Russian laws. If they prefer Sharia law, and live the life of Muslims, then we advise them to go to those places where that's the state law. Russia does not need Muslim minorities. Minorities need Russia, and we will not grant them special privileges or try to change our laws to fit their desires, no matter how loud they yell discrimination. We will not tolerate disrespect of our Russian culture. We had better learn from the suicides of America, England, Holland, and France if we are to survive as a nation. The Muslims are taking over those countries, and they will not take over Russia. The Russian customs and traditions are not compatible with the lack of culture, or the primitive ways of Sharia law and Muslims. When this honorable legislative body thinks of creating new laws, it should have in mind the Russian national interest first, observing that the Muslim minorities are not Russians. At this, the politicians in the Duma gave Putin a five-minute standing ovation. The book of Revelation described the world at its end as being divided into three parts. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth, so great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and God remembered Babylon the great to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. Revelation 16.18-19, English Standard Version. The easiest conclusion was that these three parts were Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. But Barrett Chos, Chos created B-E-R-I-T, K-J-O-S, created a chart of thirds well worth considering. 1. Christian. Trust God. Teach your personal responsibility. Love God and people. Don't tolerate sin. 2. 
humanist, trust yourself, teach human rights, love self, self-esteem, tolerate all lifestyles. Three, globalist, trust the state, teach collective responsibility, respect all who fit new paradigm, don't tolerate dissenters. The Nazis were none of these exclusively, but had a small slice of each. And instead of putting forth an economic or political platform, the Nazis instead emphasized that they were Germanics. And in so doing, they were not concerned with trying to force anyone else to become German, but advocated only for Germanics to be allowed to live with, within their own unmolested place in the sun. Nazis were fond of incorporating pre-Christian religions such as Zoroastrianism into their zeitgeist. But the world was not as black and white as the ancient Zoroastrians had supposed, because light has a source, but darkness just happens. Al-Anon was teaching that being part of the problem was part of the solution, and that trying to help people stay sick was worse than trying to help them. And the idea was that if drunks could put their disease into remission by beginning with not drinking, then the same solution would apply to gender addicts, commonly known as perverts. I was flabbergasted when he did it to me. I didn't know what to say. I was high on pot and drunk, and I thought, I better go along. He was my coach. I was embarrassed about it. I'm still embarrassed about it. Sports Illustrated. Every parent's night nightmare, the child molester has found a home in the world of youth sports where as a coach he can gain the trust and loyalty of kids and then prey on them by William Knack and Don Yeager, volume 91, number 10, September 13, 1999, page 48. It's not an isolated problem, just a few bad apples. This was the prevailing view for a long time. It's isolated. It's one guy. They're rid of him. No more problem. That's absurd. It occurs with enough regularity across the country at all levels of society that it should be viewed as a public health problem. Sports Illustrated, page 43. According to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, the great servant would be a man, quote, who knew what sickness was, close quote, and he would be, quote, counted among the wicked, close quote. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned on our backs on him and looked the looked the other way. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care, yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our weaknesses he carried. It was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. Isaiah 53, 3-5, New Living Translation. When is when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. Hosea 11.1, 1, New International Version. The Giza pyramid builders were allotted a daily ration of beer to the tune of one and one-third gallons each, and many Jews didn't want to leave when Pharaoh finally told them to go. So God sent the plagues as much to convince the Jews to leave Egypt as it was to convince Pharaoh to let them go. When the waters of the great flood had receded, the first thing Noah did was to plant a vineyard, and Noah made wine and got drunk and found himself in trouble. But it didn't end there.